Hi everybody and welcome to Harding Football with Paul Simmons as we wrap up the 2019 season. Another successful season for the Bisons. Ten wins on the season. Go on the road two weeks ago. Play the 10th rate Northwest Missouri State uh, team. of The Bisons uh, ranked 12th going into that game. And uh, what a football game, Coach. Uh, that, that was a football game that uh, uh, could have been uh, a national championship type atmosphere. It just felt like that. 7-6. Uh, and uh, boy, both defenses were outstanding. And I know that you're extremely proud of your football team and your coaching staff uh, going up to Maryville two weeks ago. I tell you what, I, I am. I, I'm, I'm so proud of the boys, um, the coaches. I, I don't think we've ever had a week where we invested so much into a ball game. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, losing our quarterback on the second play of our offensive, our first drive there was, was not what we would have uh, chose. Um, and we, we had some adversity, but I, I thought the way the guys battled the way they competed, the way they persevered, um, and you know, had a chance to win the game there at the end. I just, uh, I'm sick for the boys, but I couldn't be more proud of them. I just, I, I thought that it was really impressive. And to go on the road, it's the third time that we've been up to Maryville uh, in the playoffs, and it, it wasn't an easy travel uh, trip either as well because uh, you had the two days on the road instead of just the one day on the road. But uh, what, what a group to be able to do this with because I know this group loves to be together like that. Well, and, and you know, we did. We had a great trip. I mean, I, this is our third time making that trip. And, you know, in my mind, the first two trips felt a little more like drudgery, a little more like work. Uh, this was a great trip. I, I don't think I've ever had a group of boys that enjoy being together like, like these guys do. And, uh, you know, that's, that's so much of why it's tough right now, because we, we think that we have a team that, that could be playing right now and, and should be playing right now. And, um, you know, we're, we're back going to school today and our pads are put away and it's, it makes us sick because these guys, they, they love to be together. And, you know, uh, we certainly want to win a national championship, but, but mainly we wanted to be together some more. Uh, it just it ended too soon for this bunch, without a doubt. There were some numbers that you and I were talking about before we, we started taping the show, and, and um, you said you talk about Northwest Missouri State, and in 16 years, uh, they've been held to seven points just one time. The Bisons gave up the seven points on the first drive. Didn't give, it, give up anything the rest of the day, Coach, and only one third down conversion in the game. Yeah, I, I tell you what, you know, I don't, I don't think I've ever been uh, part of a better defensive effort on any level that, since I've coached. I mean, what the job that the defensive staff did and that our, that our guys executed, I mean, really is unbelievable to hold those guys that have been averaging 47 points in, in what's supposed to be the, the toughest D2 conference in America, to hold those guys to, to one drive and, and one, you know, one third down conversion. And, um, you know, I guess if you saw last week, they scored 63 points mm -hmm. in the second round of the playoffs. And, you know, just so many of the things that happened are crazy. I mean, those guys have allowed 10 sacks in their entire season, and we sacked them five times, which really hasn't even been our strength. But I just think the resolve of our coaches and the resolve of our guys uh, really was at an all-time high and just a, a, an effort that was – uh, beyond special, and I'll never forget it. I mean, it was it was unreal. It was without a day a, uh, a, a game and an effort that, that everyone that bleeds black and gold uh, was very proud of from the Harding football team. We're going to take a break right here. We'll look at the first half highlights, and we'll see a lot of that Bison defense in the first half, and it all begins right after this. Guess what? I have some news for you. There's free food right there, junk food. Do you see that truck? <laughs> It's a two Michelin star chef. All for free, ladies and gentlemen. All for free. Here we have a panzanella with summer vegetables and pesto. Enjoy. Okay. How we doing? Fantastic. So what do you got going on underneath that plate there? This food is really about to be thrown away. Yeah. Bro? Is there, is there something wrong with this food? Where did you get it from? From farmer's markets. They put aside the ugly vegetables and the ugly fruits. Carrot top, soft avocados. It was all food that was going to be discarded. Even the drink you had is made from like a little bruised peach. Did it taste a little bruised? Great. It was good. The average person throws away 24 pounds of food a month. That's a lot. Isn't that a lot? Go visit savethefood.com for more information. Thank you. Junk food time!
back on Harding football with Paul Simmons as we get ready to look at the first half highlights of the game two weeks ago in Maryville, Missouri. We're also going to wrap up the season later on, but boy, it was a beautiful day. It was 41 degrees at kickoff, and a lot of Bison fans made the trip up to support the Bisons on a sunny day, a little bit of a breezy day uh, as well. And we'll see Northwest Missouri State get the football here on the first series and coach their only success that they really had all day was on this first drive. Yeah, you know, they, they, uh, they did some things that we hadn't seen them do and got a little rhythm going. And, and also, we, we, we did some things that, that we don't normally do. I mean, that first play of the game was on Reed and Arden ignored his read and, and ran upfield. Um, but, you know, you know, part of why it was so awesome was because we, they did come out and march down the field. And they had us on our heels and marched down the field. And I think if you're watching the game at home, you think, well, they're going to score 50. And, and that would be the only drive of the game, you know, is just is a tremendous example of the kind of kids we have. I mean, just so awesome. You talked about the first drive and, and to come out and, and to lose Preston Payton on the first series. Um, I, I know that was that was tough. Well, it was tough, and really the way the way it happened was devastating because what happened is is we had a guy that, that went the wrong way, and so Preston was basically hung out to dry right there, and uh, you know, a very difficult deal and. Of course, you know, Robert came in and, and, and certainly made a lot of mistakes, but I thought he battled. I thought he competed. And, and the bottom line is, is, you know, the offense hung around, hung around, hung around versus a, a fantastic defense and got the ball in the end zone with a chance for us to win the ball game at the end, you know. And, and forced them into a third and long on the first big play of many that we, many that we would see from Taylor Streeter. So uh, that third down yeah, diversion was not good. You know, Taylor Taylor is an old senior that without a doubt had his best football game at just the right time. I mean, he played dynamite. And I, I couldn't be more proud of the way he played. And, you know, that's a guy who has persevered his whole career to have his chance. And, and just really, you know, it, it's so rewarding when you play well in your last game. And, you know, when you, you can look back and not have regrets about how you went out. That is a special deal that not many guys get to have that. And break up there on third down. Cade Pugh almost had a pick and uh, broke it up, though, and, and again turned away on third down. Yeah, you know, we had two chances. We had the ball in our hands twice, and, and one of them was a definite touchdown, and we just didn't make those plays. But we, we certainly had chances. And once again, a tackle for loss. Uh, that uh, had, had happened just before that incompletion a few moments ago that set Northwest Missouri State up into that spot. Almost, uh, you did get one first down there to give you a little room uh, to punt the football right here. And, and once again, the special teams unit was great again. Yeah, the punt team was great. Cam kicked the ball dynamite. I mean, Coach Tribble did a monster job with that group all year. I think this is... To me, this is the best group that our, the best job our kicking group has done on the entire year since I've been here. I mean, it was fantastic. There you see one of the sacks, you know, uh, Mike Mwunga, uh, Michael Gant, Ben Trotter, Jordan Allison, you know, Patrick Healy, Issa. You know, all those D-linemen just played out of their minds. They really did. And, Paul, how big was it to not really give up the big play? I mean, I thought the tackling was very good on, on it really, two weeks You know, we, we really made so many open field tackles uh, against some really, really talented guys. And, yeah, you know, that's, that's, this has been an offense that, that hits for big plays a lot. Yeah. And, and to not give that away. And I, I think that a big part of that was the quarterback got shook. Mm -hmm. I mean, he got shook up. The, the pressure got to him. Um, you know, we showed some looks they're not used to seeing and, and obviously got to that guy. And when, when he got rattled, it, it, got, it got fun now. It was a lot of fun. How big was that play right before the end of the first half? I talked about the good tackling and you, you forced them to try a long field goal there. And it felt like you just had that feeling like a one score game. As long as it's just a one score game, anything can happen in this thing. Miss the field goal, you go into the halftime only down 7 nothing, knowing you're going to get the football to begin the third quarter. Well, I'm going to tell you, we, we went into halftime, and it, it felt like the Bisons were finna win this football mm -hmm. game. I mean, that, the momentum, with the, the energy, you could just feel. Our guys recognized, dude, we're, we're right there. We're fixing, to, we're fixing to do this. I could see the guys from the press box watching your team go into the locker room. There, there was a lot of emotion as they were going into the locker room. Yeah, it was unbelievable. I mean, I, I mean our, we... I mean, I think from the very beginning, we believed something special was going to happen. And, and, and really, to the, very, to the very end. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I just, you know, several times in that game, I said to Coach Moat, you know, it's, it's, we're fixing to get a, a fourth and three. Should we go for it or, 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 or should we punt it here? 
And he kept saying, Coach, we're going to win this game with a turnover. I'm telling you, we're going to win with a turnover. Let, let's, let's punt it. And, and, you know, really it played out just the way we wanted it to. We didn't get the big turnover we wanted. Um, but, you know, we put ourselves in a situation to win the game at the very end there. We just didn't make that last play. So seven to nothing was the score at the half. Northwest Missouri State leading as the two teams went to the locker room. We'll come back and we'll look at the second half highlights right after this. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who... Back on this week's edition of Harding Football with Paul Simmons, 7-0. As we look back on the game in Maryville, Missouri, two weeks ago, and the Bisons would get the football to begin the third quarter of play. And, Paul, this felt a lot like... Uh, last year to me at, at Ferris State when you saw your football team come out and, and it's just what Bison football is, the third quarter, and, and we knew we were going to get a great effort coming out here on this first drive. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things about what's going on that's, that's special. Uh, one of them is the, the uh, uh, you know, what you said, just the belief, mm -hmm. the belief that you know if we're close in the second half, we're going to win it. And, and I think that was the, the, the sideline, without a doubt, we, we felt that way. We're going to figure out a way to win it. And that's, a, that's, that's pretty special. They do force a punt, but you get into, uh, over into Northwest Missouri State territory for the first time and then down a punt inside the 10. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, you know, once again, you see, you, know, you see what looks like a big running lane and then it just closes really fast. I mean, Chris Wine, um, Ja'Cory, Beontay, Corey Beatty, Ryan Robertson, they just they play out of their minds. And on that first play, we didn't see it, but the, the ball was dropped uh, there in the end zone. And uh, almost it really should, really should have been an intentional ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it really should have been. It should have been two points out there. And then Shagu Alubi with yeah. a sack right there. And I'll tell you what, seriously, when Shagu moved to our Air Force package, our third down package, that we, we got better when that happened. And, you know, he, he had two sacks. Saturday, but he, you know, he's made us a lot better with his pass rush skills. Coach Hansey running outside right there. And I thought Robert Wilkie right there, obviously making something out of what looked like could have been a loss. Yeah. And uh, we we really uh, enjoyed watching him compete on Saturday. He battled. Weeks ago. He, he battled. I mean, you know, we put some snaps on the ground and some things that. We would love to have back, but as far as getting out there and you know being unafraid and going after it, you know, there's no doubt that guy battled. And there's one of the plays we'd love to have back right there on that fourth down right there. Yeah, fourth and a couple at midfield, but once again the defense is going to rise to the challenge. Corey Bay with great coverage right there. What a great season uh, Corey had. Corey had a great season. He really did. And. This was a big play in the football game right here on fourth down. Yeah, and the, the PBR unit, that's Coach Moe's unit, and you know, he had those guys ready for that. That was, that was awesome. Well, and, and it all goes back to the preparation that you talked about, and, and it was a tough week of preparation, traveling uh, the extra day, and boy, this was huge play offensively as we see uh, Malik Matthews. Well, he, yeah, he, he looked good out there. He, well, he was close. He was close to doing it. just outside the five. And the toss, right side for Tucker at the five. Touchdown! And I, I called this a little over five minutes when you got the football here to begin this drive, Coach, and I said this might be the drive of the season. Yeah. And, I, you know, uh, I, I don't regret going for two right there, but what I regret is not calling that play right away. You know, I think, I think having to get a timeout right there, letting their defense regroup, you know, um, I made the decision. Way before that, you know, yeah. I was in the headsets going, guys, we're going to score. 
go for two. We didn't get it communicated to our kicker and snapper. They took, they ran on the field and created some confusion. And that's, that's on me. That's on, that's on coaching. Um, and you know, but I just felt like their defense was on their heels right there, and 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 we had them, we had them rolling. We hadn't gotten much going all day, and and uh, you know, like I said in the post game interview, those guys have done an incredible job at blocking field goals, and I really felt like. Um, if it went to overtime, there was a great chance that it was going to become a field goal mm -hmm. contest. And I, you know, I really trust Grant. Um, but, you know, those guys, what they do basically is illegal. They put three guys on one old lineman and, and they just monster through there. And I just thought our chances of, of getting three yards was better than our chances of winning a field goal competition. Yeah, and, and your team had been so successful on fourth down. You basically look at it as a fourth down, 75% on the season uh, on fourth down. And, uh, Coach, there was no doubt in my mind watching it from the radio booth and knowing you and, and knowing this football team, I, I would have been surprised. I, I, I knew that Paul Simmons was going to hold up two fingers and say, yeah. let's go win this football yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. We don't, we don't want to play it safe. Yeah. We want to get after it and, and go for it. And I do. I do it again. Co Roddy Moe, you talked about him. Uh, what a tremendous job uh, by by uh, that defense. And 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 how much of a credit was it to the defense? You talked about maybe if someone was watching at home after Northwest Missouri State scored on the first drive. Little did anyone know uh, the lockdown defense that was coming right after that. Uh, not even a hundred yards given up in the second half against Northwest Missouri State. And and your your football team pretty much controlled the football there in the second half. Yeah, I don't I, I don't think that anybody really recognizes how hard uh, the staff works, the defensive staff. Um, I mean, it, it is it is unbelievable the investment that was was made into this season, um, in this ball game. And you know, I saw Roddy this morning, and uh, he he wasn't okay. Yeah. I mean, he 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 was. He was he was not okay, and he just talked about opportunity mm -hmm. and 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 the opportunity that we had and how few times you have that opportunity. And I think there's a lot of people that uh, don't recognize how hard it is to win. That just assume, well, we'll be back again next year. Well, that's not the way it works. I mean, it is hard, hard to win, and a lot of things have got to go your way. And so when you when you have a chance, when you have a chance to get in the playoffs and, and win a ball game, and um, you know it's difficult to, to let it fall through the cracks like that. Um, but you know that's part of that's part of why this game is beautiful. You know you put your whole heart in all the way. You know you go get your heart broke sometimes. And uh, we're going to hear from a couple of Bisons. We're going to hear about uh, from the two quarterbacks, Preston Payton and Robert Wilkie. Haley Kate Webb caught up with them uh, after the Arkansas Tech game. We're going to hear from both of them here on Harding Football with Paul Simmons right after this break. In four days. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. <laughs> she had so many children. She didn't know what to do. Did you have a good day at school? She gave them some broth. Without any bread. There you go. Kiss them all soundly. Night night. Good night. And put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Back on Harding Football with Paul Simmons. Haley Webb's done a great job for us all year catching up with Bisons, and uh, she had a chance to catch up right before the Thanksgiving break uh, after the Arkansas Tech game, uh, and it was uh, catching up with the Bison quarterbacks, Robert Wilkie and Preston Payton. Thanks, Billy. I'm here with two of the Bison quarterbacks, Preston Payton and Robert Wilkie, and I'm, as I'm sure you guys know, the hype with the Popeye's chicken sandwich has blown up right now. So, have you tried the Popeye's chicken sandwich? And if you have, is it better or worse than Chick-fil-A? My first time trying the chicken sandwich was actually with Robert in the fall camp. And it is pretty good. I mean, I don't really like Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich anyways, but Popeye's is better, I would say so. Okay. Popeye's is definitely better. It's bigger. 
Um, and Chick Fil A has kind of gotten old, you know. So Popeyes is the new wave. Okay, Popeyes is the new wave. You heard it here first. If you guys were part of the college football playoff committee and had to pick your top four right now, who would they be? I would go LSU, Ohio State, Clemson, and Georgia. LSU, Alabama, Clemson, and Ohio State. Alabama even with a loss? Yes. You can't keep Alabama out of the playoffs. Okay. okay. Who would you give the Heisman to? Joe Burrow. Uh, Joe Burrow, but I want Jalen Hurst to win. Three quarterbacks from Oklahoma. Think it could happen? I hope so. I really do. Okay. Okay. From a quarterback perspective, who is the greatest of all time in the NFL? Uh, Tom Brady. You know, he wins all the Super Bowls. So, I mean, you got to give it to him. And, you know, he's just a grinder and just been doing it for so long. So, I'll go with Tom Brady. All right. Tom Brady? You can't go wrong picking Tom Brady. I mean, he, he's done everything right and he's won so many times. You can't take that away from him. So, Probably Tom Brady as well. I don't know. That's just the only quarterback that I've been able to like grow up watching, and it he, he doesn't change. He's always getting better. He's getting more. So probably Tom. All right, two votes for Tom Brady. <laughs> if the Preston Payton and the Robert Wilkie were a dance move, what would it look like? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell you that. It's probably hard to be censored. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> If Preston was a dance move, he'd be. Oh my goodness. He'd probably be a square dance. <laughs> a square dance, yeah. okay. What about you? It's hard to say. Um, I really don't know. Do you, yeah, I don't know. Do you dance much? I swing dance occasionally, but that's probably my best one. It's my go to. Okay, so you all both be swing dancers. <laughs> <laughs> If you were put on the spot right now, what's one song you could sing every single word to? Uh, Die Young by Roddy Rich. Uh, Die Happy Man by Thomas Rhett. Ooh, a country boy over here. Nah, I mean, I just like, I can listen to country music. I'm not a country boy. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Okay, Thanksgiving is coming up. So describe to me what your ideal Thanksgiving meal looks like. Uh, stuffing, mac and cheese. Ham and turkey, like the same ratio, because turkey is kind of dry, you know, and then uh, yeah. cranberry sauce on the side, and uh, yeah, that's probably it for me. Okay. Fat turkey. We don't need any ham. Um, my dad knows how to knows how to cook a turkey. Um, uh, stuffing, macaroni and cheese. My mom has a special green bean uh, casserole recipe that you can't beat. So those are my top three. Okay, who can give me the best Coach Simmons impersonation? Not me. All right, I guess it's up to you. Well, you can't probably beat Sam and Chris from last week, but um, I'm trying to think of one. Dang, I was thinking of them today, too. Uh, I'm not real interested in... Uh, <laughs> Seeing guys react to the cold weather. It shouldn't bother us at all. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. For the Hardy Sports Network, I'm Haley Kate Webb with Preston Payton and Robert Wilkie, and we're sending it back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Haley. Haley's done a wonderful job uh, all year with those interviews. And, and Coach, that's, that's a unique uh, spot for those two guys right there because they compete uh, against each other, but they have to have... Uh, a, a great friendship and they have to have each other's back, don't they? Yeah, I, I tell you what, that is a spot that is, is unlike any other spot because, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, at the end we travel six DNs and we play six DNs and, and all those, those guys are competing, they're still playing about the same amount of snaps. I mean, it's really hard to have, you know, a lot, a, lot of, a lot of folks will say if you have two quarterbacks then you don't have a quarterback and I don't really believe that. But it's it's uh, it's not easy to play two quarterbacks, and and so, you know, to be guys that are in the same room, working like crazy, competing like crazy, um, but then at the same time having the humility uh, to say, you know, well, if that, if I'm not the guy that's picked, I'm going to become the biggest fan, and I'm going to stay ready to play. 
Uh, that, that's, a, that's a big deal and that's a unique um, characteristic and something that I'm really proud of the way those guys have handled that. Both of them have been fantastic and you know it's about being a fantastic teammate and if you if you really do believe it's not about me which a lot of people say that they don't really mean that but I, I, if you really believe it's not about me then that kind of stuff is easier to deal with and, and obviously um, you know we saw how the game played out and and you know the the, the tragedy of losing uh, Preston and, and Robert having to come in and, and perform and compete and you know, so it's crucial to have multiple guys that can go play and be ready to win for you. But I'm really proud of the way both those guys have led this football team. All right, we want you to stay with us. When we return, we will have a look back at the season. And uh, before that, we'll get Coach Simmons' final thoughts. But Caleb Smiley has put together a highlight package of the 2019 season. We'll look at that and also get Coach's final thoughts right after this break. Back to Harding football with Paul Simmons as we wrap up the 2019 season. And, Coach, so many uh, great things happened this year. I like, saw a 10-win uh, season, a 10-game winning streak. Uh, homecoming was extremely special to me uh, to see so many former players back here for the Huckabee uh, Fieldhouse and, and just everything that went into this season. And uh, the winningest group. Uh, as far as a senior class at Harding, we just witnessed uh, this past season. Yeah, I, I tell you what, when you, um, when you think about how hard it is to win, how hard it is to, to be a playoff team, you know, 28 out of 166 schools go to playoffs, you know, to have a, a senior class that can say, we were never not in the playoffs. I know that's, a, that's a poor grammar, but those guys were always a playoff team and, and they, they have set the bar so high for, for this program moving forward. Um, and, you know, I, I've been a head coach for three years and, and every year we've had seniors that are really special and for, for, for different reasons in different ways. But uh, I think I can say that, you know, this group, this, this football team, uh, I've never had a group that loved one another more than these guys did. They, they loved one another so well. It, it truly always felt like they were playing for each other, playing for the brotherhood. And I, I want to make sure everybody understands this. Um, we we want to win. We want to win. We want to win a national championship. I, I, I want uh, to be able to, to say that Harding football um, did things the right way. Um, and won a national championship. And that, that's a goal, but that's not the goal. The goal, um, the goal is to honor God. And when you answer that question, the questions that you have to ask is, did we give tremendous effort? Did we sacrifice for one another? Did we really put our teammates in front of what's important to us? Were we loyal? Did we, did we leave it all out there? Uh, were we great teammates? Did we really, really love one another well? And if, if the answer to those questions is yes, and I, I think it is, if the answer is yes, then I believe that we honored God. And if we, if we, if we honored God in how we did things, um, then I would say we achieved our goal. We're, we're not happy. Uh, about the, the way it ended, um, but if, if we did those things well, then we honored God, and that's, that will always be 
uh, our ultimate goal. And I just, uh, I'm so proud of the boys. I'm so proud of the, um, the coaches. And uh, I just wish we had one more, one more bus ride, one more, one more time together. Uh, but it was a it was a sweet ride. We talked about the players, coach, and all that goes into that. And you you talk about honoring God, and that also begins uh, with your coaching staff. And, and I know you surrounded yourself with a great bunch uh, of men. Without a doubt, uh, you know, everybody that I have on my staff, every one of them, um, they could be somewhere else, uh, making more money, having more attention brought on them. They could be head coaches. They could be at, at, at bigger places. Um, but they choose to be here, um, and I don't want to put words in their mouth, but I believe they choose to be here because they believe in the mission, and they believe that it is mission. Um, they love the opportunity to, to speak life into these young men. Um, they love the kind of kids that we coach. I mean, we coach kids that are unlike anywhere else in the world. And so they, they, they do what we ask our players to do, and, and that's put, put yourself behind what everybody else uh, needs. And uh, I'm just going to tell you that the staff that we have here is, is fantastic. It's, it's one in a million, and uh, I just uh, appreciate them so much. Paul Simmons, thank you for sitting with us each week and, and talking about Bison football. Thank you for your leadership at, uh, at Harding Football. Thank you for your friendship, and uh, congratulations on, a, on, a, on another great season. Thank you, Billy. And I, I do want to say how much I appreciate um, the way everybody – runs this show, how professional they are. Um, it's, it's, it's not easy and they do a dynamite job. You do a dynamite job and uh, I just really appreciate it. We couldn't do it without our producer Tim Hamilton, our photographers Megan Lee, Hannah Moxley, our director uh, Grant Clemens, and uh, also Briley Faringa, Faringa on the, uh, the camera as well and our audio produced by Jill Jarvis. We have a great highlight video we want you to watch right now as we uh, will say goodbye to you. Our final show in the 2019 season, Harding Football with Paul Simmons, Caleb Smiley has put together this highlight package of the season. And it is Tucker in motion and Peyton wants to throw it on first down. He's going deep for Bobby Green. He's got him at midfield to the 40, 35, 30, angling left at the 20, at the 10, at the five, he dives. And no signal, there it is. Touchdown, Harding, 85 yards, Preston Payton, toss right side for Tucker. Tucker dodges one man at times and touchdown. touchdown. Harding. Touchdown. Brazil taking. Brazil will shovel pass to Thomas, who is hit and dropped by Corey Beatty at the 36 yard line. is Mallory, rolls to his right, fires downfield, intercepted to Corey Nichols. Nichols returns to midfield, 45-40, left sideline, he's gone. 20, 10, 5, touchdown.
Touchdown, Hardy! And Corey Nichols, 55 yards. Back to throw, Mallory fires, incomplete. And it is It was deflected and picked off, and this is going to be returned for a touchdown. Great job, Cade Hughes. Placement, down, blocked! The extra point was blocked, and now the Bisons can run this back, and it's going yeah, to be rolled points. back down the left sideline, and be this is points. going to be two-point conversion. Now Peyton takes. Peyton's going to keep it. Peyton's going to run the football to the 30, to the 20. To the 10, to the 5, touchdown, <laughs> Hardy!
low snap, play fake, look, snap, pressure after him, down he goes, he's sacked by Nate Wallace. It was 14-14 at the half, and now Peyton's going to keep, he's got a lot of room, 25-20, 10, 5, touchdown! No play! Bertram fires over the middle, picked off by Ja'Cory Nichols, and here he comes to the near side, 30, 35, 40, and Nichols to midfield, he's got an escort in front of him, and now he's gone, 20, 10, 5.